Here we have a Samsung Evo 860 SSD drive, one terabyte that came in for data recovery. We get SSD drives almost every day. A lot of them are Evos. And at one point in time, I mentioned that most SSD drives that fail are Evos, but that's probably because most people, they buy Samsung Evo SSD drives. If you search our channel for, or if you search YouTube for Samsung Evo 860 Northridge Fix, you will see that we worked on one right there, the first one here. And this drive was actually mailed over to a data recovery lab and they were not able to recover data. The drive came over to us and I discovered that we had a short circuit on the board, a short circuit that was causing most components on the board to go short. And that data recovery lab was not able to recover data. We recovered data for the customer and everything was nice. And we had a drive that came from LA Metro Actually, it's one of the many drives that LA Metro sent over. And we also fixed it on YouTube. It was an Evo 860, also a short circuit. What you have to understand is most data recovery labs are not electronics technicians. They are not able to figure out short circuits. They're not able to fix short circuits. A lot of them do not even know how to solder. Basically, they use PC3K software and hardware along with their expertise to recover data. And a lot of times they're able to recover data even if that board has a short circuit, but sometimes they cannot. So before I give this drive to our data recovery guy, what I like to do is inspect the board for a short circuit. That way we know 100% that the board does not have a short circuit. Most of those drives fail because of the controller. Just a quick visual inspection. The chips, they look good. And just look at the quality on this amazing Northridge Fix microscope. I always mention it. If you're on the same type of business or you are doing this as a hobby and you have not bought this microscope yet, log into our site, northridgefix.com. Click on shop, add to cart, checkout, pay, and we almost always ship out same day. We carry everything from this amazing microscope, articulating arm, soldering station, hot air station, original Amtec flux, Braidwick, tweezers, thermal cameras, everything, one-stop shop. You do not need to go anywhere else. We already did the research. You get warranty from us. You get the support from us. Anything goes wrong, you send it over to us. You order now, you get your order. If you're in California, probably next day. If you're anywhere in the US, probably within two to three days. It depends. But we ship same day, always. If you have purchased from us before, leave it down in the comments. Let me know how your experience was like. So nothing stands out as being faulty based on visual inspection. Let's use our anti-glare light. Look at the capacitors. They are yellow in color under the anti-glare light and they are washed out under the ring light. Big difference. Under the ring light, we cannot tell if that capacitor is an inductor, is it brown in color, is it gray. But when we go to our anti-glare light, yellow is yellow. So let's go ahead and inspect for a short circuit randomly any capacitor on the board. What we're going to do is meter in diode mode. And we're going to inspect capacitors from side to side. We did not get a beep for a short. I mean a continuous beep, not one beep. The reading I'm getting now is 0 0.5 voltage drop, which is good. We do not want to hear a long beep. You can also measure in resistance mode, in continuity mode and look out for a beep or zero ohm reading. I worked on many crucial hard drives. That's not a short, 0 0.08 voltage drop. That's not a short. It's not a that short. So we're gonna assume that this is okay. I've worked on many crucial SSD drives 
Well, we had a short circuit right next to the NAND chip, a cap next to the NAND chip. So we are good here. Our controller. If we randomly measure caps here, just random, we do not have a short. We do not have a short. One time I worked on an SSD drive and I have that video on YouTube where everything here was measuring for a short. I think it was that same video I referenced a few minutes ago. The one that went to a data recovery lab and that person reflowed or rebuilt that chip and he reflowed that chip and nothing worked. Whoa, look at this. A zero on reading. You see? I told you, EVO 860s and short circuits, they go hand in hand. We have a short circuit. Now, this one is measuring for a short. This one is measuring for a short because it's connecting in parallel. This one is measuring for a short because it's connected in parallel. This one also. This one also. This one also. And it stops right there. So it has to be one of those five components unless it's the controller or something else on the board. What do we do in this case? I'm going to inject voltage. Maybe we can use our atomizer to detect which component is shorting out, or we can use our thermal camera. Let's see if we are able to tell with our thermal camera. Sometimes when you have a lot of components next to each other, the atomizer would be a better option because you can pinpoint where the short is coming from. Yeah, you see? Look at this. We have a huge heat spot. It has to be one of the five components. So it looks like it's the first cap on top. I mean, those components are tiny. A heat spot will spread quick. But the way I see it, as soon as I hit the probe on any one of those caps, the one on top is heating up first. What we can do is we can also use an atomizer and see if we can figure it out. Is there a crack on any one of those caps? Anything obvious? I do not see it. So we're going to have to apply Rosen Flux powder. And we'll see if we can definitely 100% figure it out. If not, then we're going to randomly remove this cap. Then maybe this one. Because I'm 99% sure it's one of those two on top. Let me grab a board holder quick. That board is wobbling left and right. Okay, much better. Much better. So we're going to grab the atomizer. Press five times to activate. Then we're going to press and hold on the button to release Rosenflux powder. We sell this atomizer on our site. Extremely useful. Now, one tip using the atomizer is it has to be 90 degrees, so flux powder can go down. If you put it on the side, it may not work like you want it to. So what I do is press and hold. See? Look at that powder. All right, that should be enough. Now we're going to go. And somebody, hey, what's up, man? How are you? 
mailman just picked up. If you order today, your order is already out. So now what we're going to do is inject voltage and we're going to look at where Rosen Flux melts first. I think I have enough frozen powder. If not, then I'm going to reapply. We should be able to see which component sweats first. Oh, look at this. As soon as I touched the probe, this one here went on fire. You see how Rosen Flux melted on this cap? Not on this, not on this, not this, and not this. But if I keep my probe long enough, then eventually heat is going to spread all over and everything is going to melt. But as soon as I touched this cap, Rosen Flux melted. Now, if I touch here, same thing. Rosen Flux is going to melt here and not here. See? But eventually heat is going to spread and it's going to melt Rosen Flux all over. So that's our bad guy right here. You see why the atomizer is magic? Wow. It was able to pinpoint exactly which component is faulty. And those components are tiny. I'm zoomed in a lot. Those components are probably 402 size. Let's go ahead and remove this component. And we do not need to replace it. We're going to recover data. And the customer is not going to use this drive anymore. We have a lot of caps connecting in parallel. And for the sake of recovering data, it's not going to be a problem to remove and keep this cap out. Are we going to be able to recover data from this drive? Let's see. Plug that drive in. Okay, so the system is reading. Yes, yes, we got it. We got it. Wow. Awesome job. Awesome job. I'm going to take an image of the drive, start the backup process, transfer the files to another drive, and the customer is going to be thrilled. Amazing. And before we end the video, I want to give a shout out to Angelo. He placed an order yesterday, March 11. And maybe I'll do this in every video. I'll pick an order, I'll give a shout out to that customer. Let's go over what the customer ordered. The Northridge Fix microscope plus all the lenses. Northridge Fix articulating arm, Aten hot air station, anti-glare light, training boards, two of them, UV mask, green color, low melt solder, Amtec flux, VS213, Braidwick, UV light, jumper wires, everything the customer ordered we use on our bench every single day. Three bottles with the needles, pre-cut silicone pads, ring light, 96 LED ring light, prying tool from Kian Lee, atomizer, the one that we use today, another UV light, we have two types of UV lights, the smaller one and the bigger one, customer ordered both. Multimeter, we have 12 in one precision screwdriver tool set. And I got one right in front of me. That's how it looks like. You have the bits, the screwdriver, and also a fine tweezer that comes along with this package. Amtec Flux 559, grinding pen. The customer ordered two pieces. Kimtech wipes, heavy duty solder roll stand. And I use this on my bench also. The stand looks something like this. Mechanic Precision Long and Thickened Tweezer. And then you have the dual-headed Northridge Fix brush. I got two on my bench here, right there. I went over how you can tell if the brush needs to be replaced. If you look at this one here, 
I used and abused this brush. This one here is probably like two weeks old, this one here. One of the most used tools on the bench, along with everything the customer ordered. Now, the customer also left a note. Appreciate the YouTube videos, still learning, but look forward to learning using these tools. Thanks. Thank you, Angelo. I appreciate the order, and your order already shipped. I feel like I'm a cele celebrity. <laughs> I've been trying to watch your videos and uh, fix something on my own, but um, I probably am not as experienced at all. So I have a, a graphics card. It's been giving me a bunch of headaches. But it works, but randomly, like, the video goes bad and all that. Mm -hmm. So I try to troubleshoot it down to, essentially, the graphics card today. I don't know if the graphics card has gone bad. So artifacts, usually memory.